A hotel heir's decision to end his relationship with a commanding woman sets off a gripping battle for control and dominance. In a luxurious hotel room at Porterfield Hotels and Resorts, a wealthy heir, Hal Porterfield, contemplates his upcoming interview while holding an elegant wristwatch. Unexpectedly, the room service rings, urging him to order food for himself and his guest who is about to arrive. Shortly after, Rebecca Marin, a blonde legal counselor in a suit, knocks on the door. The man prompts excuses himself from the call and warmly welcomes her inside. As he resumes his conversation with the hotel staff, the attorney waits at the table and opens her suitcase, revealing documents from the hotel company's board of directors and a recorder. Shortly after, Rebecca rises from her seat to see Hal's laptop wallpaper, which is him and his dad, Philip Porterfield, the hotel CEO. After speaking with the room service, the client approaches the attorney to start the interview for the CEO position of the hotel company. Rebecca Rebecca then turns on the recorder with his consent and asks for basic identification details. As he responds, the counselor diligently takes notes. Suddenly, Hal interrupts with concern, wondering if his answers could lead to rejection from the board. While the lawyer acknowledges the possibility that the board will review his profile, she clarifies her role in verifying the information he provides. The attorney assures him that she'll catch him if he's dishonest, prompting the interviewee to be truthful with his answers about his liquor and illegal medicine use. Soon after, Rebecca delves into questions about his intimate life's history. However, when he candidly admits that his first physical encounter happened with a camp counselor at 13, the attorney immediately accuses him of lying. In a mean tone, she promptly corrects him, insisting that his answer should be 25, not 13. When Hal wants to move to the next question, the attorney circles back to his first encounter in his mid-twenties, implying that he's not ugly and that girls liked him. Upon hearing the lawyer's unnecessary remarks, the man and suddenly shakes his head, asserting that it's not in the script he wrote. It turns out that they're role-playing, and Rebecca is a dominant professional woman. For their session, she's a mean lawyer while he's a submissive applicant. As the dominant woman rechecks the script, Hal reminds her to drop the additional remarks and stick to her lines. Following this, the lady reminds him that her service is more mental than physical. She then firmly mocks him for being indecisive. When she asks him what he desires, an annoyed Hal cuts the conversation short and wants to pay her so she can leave. However, Rebecca assertively calls him out for his weak attitude, expressing her disappointment in him. In a display of power, the dominating lady forces the heir to clean the bathroom on his undergarment. As he wipes the floor with a napkin, the woman starts berating him about his self-image, insisting he's disgusting. Shortly after, Rebecca rises and checks her submissive client's cleaning, which she commends. She then lets him have a private moment to reward his excellent job. As he enjoys himself, she turns him on while insulting him, which is also in the script. After their session, the inheritor gets the dinner he ordered from the room service staff. The performer removes her blonde wig and picks up her payment on the hotel side table. She then checks the business management book written by Hal's dad. As the dominant lady flips the pages, she discovers Philip's memorial card. Suddenly, Hal returns with their food. Satisfied with her service, the wealthy heir applauds the actress for her incredible performance, prompting the humble woman to credit him for being a good co-actor. While enjoying their meal, Rebecca mentions that she liked the argument scene, noting her client's commitment to his role. The dominant actress fondly recalls her line about her work being mental, not physical, and the client reminds her that she had mentioned it during their first session. She also finds it intriguing that the script was inspired by his dad's passing and his new role at the company. When the woman asks how he's holding up with his father's loss, the heir shares that he's dealing a lot with inheritance and misses his father. Shortly after, he inquires how she learned about what happened to his dad, prompting the woman to reveal that she discovered it from an article. When Rebecca asks about him becoming a successor, Hal shares that he was expected to take over ever since he was young, but there are just some things he needs to deal with before finally owning their hotel. Hotel Empire. Upon hearing this, the performer immediately assumes he's having difficulty with the board of directors based on his script. However, the wealthy man clarifies that their company isn't structured to have one. Shortly after, Hal gives Rebecca an expensive watch as a gratitude gift for her valuable work. He then politely tells her he is ending their professional relationship as he transitions to his CEO role. Interpreting the watch as a retirement gift, the offended worker stands up and shakes her client's hand, professionally ending their business relations. Just as she is about to leave, the heir reminds her about the watch she left behind, prompting her to take it before exiting through the 
the door. While waiting for the elevator, Rebecca notices the Porterfield family portrait on the wall. Recognizing her worth and contribution, she firmly returns to her client's room. There, she recites a few lines from his father's book on business management, emphasizing the theme of winning and subtly implying that her client was a loser before their encounter. To further explain her point, the commanding lady confidently claims that Hal would be unfit for the CEO position without her help. However, the heir emphasizes that their sessions are purely for fun. The strong woman argues that their sessions have taught him confidence and decisiveness. When the heir reminds her to express gratitude for the expensive watch gift, the strong-willed woman dismissively throws it onto a flower vase. Aware that her client is about to inherit a hotel company, she demands half of his salary for the first year in return for the assistance she provided him. After realizing that the requested amount is a staggering $4 million, Hal firmly declines the offer, considering Rebecca's demand to be unreasonable. However, the strong-willed performer resorts to blackmail, threatening to publicly release their recorded sessions unless he complies and hands over the money. At first, the heir remains skeptical of her words. He confidently asserts that times have changed and people no longer care as much about others' actions, wealth, or private affairs. However, the dominant woman skillfully manages to twist the situation around making him reconsider his stance. As Rebecca discloses that she placed a hidden camera in the room to record their sessions, Hal becomes nervous, demanding she show the device. However, the playful woman turns on the radio, dancing to the disco music while dropping hints about the video recorder's whereabouts, leaving the anxious man to search for it. During his search, the enraged successor starts hurling his fragile possessions, shattering glasses, vases, and mirrors. Meanwhile, the dominant lady continues to taunt him, emphasizing the dire consequences awaiting him if the board discovers his secret, branding him a loser. Furious, Hal retorts that despite being exposed, he will always have wealth, unlike Rebecca who will remain in her current low-income status, doing mundane tasks like laundry and cleaning. To maintain control, the assertive woman directs his attention to the television. As he forcibly removes and hurls the device to the floor, the dominant lady points out that despite his wealth, he still feels worthless, like trash. As the heir focuses on his search, his attention turns to the light bulb, following a clue from the playful woman that the hidden camera is inside. In his attempt to reach the socket after breaking the light, he inadvertently electrocutes himself, causing him to collapse on the floor. While Hal lies on the ground, Rebecca cautiously approaches to examine him. When the inheritor asks if she's just messing with him, she shakes her head, implying that the camera still exists in the room. When he questions her motives, she reminds him that he finds their dynamic arousing, evident from his body's response. Irritated by her remark, the wealthy successor rises, threatening that he could effortlessly eliminate her from his life. In a display of rage, Hal pushes the shelf to the floor as they return to the living room. He declares that the dominant performer means nothing to him and promises she will regret what she did. As the heir threatens that he can get rid of her, a fearful Rebecca admits that there was never any video and that she had been lying from the start. Feeling relieved, Hal commands the lady to leave the hotel room. Before she departs, the heir reminds her that she didn't truly teach him anything since he was the one who wrote the scenes. He asserts that she just performed his scripts, implying that anyone could easily replace her. Provoked by what she hears, Rebecca stays in the hotel room. She pushes the man to the floor to assert her dominance. However, as the heir commends the performer for being a good professional, he reminds her that he pays her to evoke certain emotions and that the relationship will remain unchanged. Suddenly, the enraged lady takes a sharp tool from the table and presses it down on his throat, threatening him to pull down his pants. She takes advantage of him, revealing her plan to get herself pregnant by him so they can have a child together, binding them for life. As a result, Hal forcefully agrees to pay her half his salary and bonus, which amounts to $6 million. Shortly after getting what she wants, the dominant woman stops her exploitative act. Shortly after, the successor sets up his laptop and emails his lawyer to assist with the money transfer. As Rebecca prepares to leave, Hal asks if she wants to have children. However, the strong-willed lady responds that she just said that to win the argument. She adds that she's unlikely to get pregnant because he has endometriosis. After wishing him a great weekend, the fulfilled performer exits the door. As she steps into the elevator, her mobile phone rings, and she sees a call from Alexander, her ex-fiancé. 
However, she firmly tells him not to call again. Just as the elevator doors are about to close, an anxious Hal interrupts to ask her about something important. Concerned about the potential for future blackmail, he anxiously inquires about how he can be sure she won't return to exploit him again. When Rebecca suggests that Hal should trust her, he insists on having collateral as assurance. They then continue their conversation in the hallway. The anxious inheritor shares his worries about seeing her again when she returns to blackmail him, emphasizing that he is unprepared to handle such a situation. Feeling offended by his reluctance to see her, the irritated woman dismisses his request for collateral. Instead, she demands a high-ranking position in his company with a generous salary, benefits, and a place near him. However, the heir quickly deems the idea absurd and firmly rejects her request. As Rebecca returns to the elevator, Hal promises to offer the strong-willed performer $6 million in exchange for damaging information about her. However, when the woman still insists on having a position in his company, the successor takes matters into his own hands. He forcefully pulls her out of the elevator and drags her back to the hotel room. After closing the door behind them, the heir emphasizes his desire to find a resolution that will end their involvement. However, despite this, the assertive lady continues to push for a job position in his company. Unfazed, the successor remains steadfast in his decision, refusing to entertain the idea further. In a manipulative move, Rebecca retrieves her phone and threatens to upload their video to the hotel's social media page. Hal confronts her about this action, only to be met with a shocking revelation. Revelation. The dominant woman admits to lying earlier and proceeds to show him the footage of their sessions as proof. As tension arises, the enraged man subdues the struggling woman, causing her to drop her phone. While she attempts to retrieve it, the heir grabs her foot and uses an electric cord to restrain her to the bed. Taking control of the situation, he takes her phone, intending to access it to delete the video. However, his efforts are wasted as the device requires a passcode or face ID authentication. Furious, Hal approaches the restrained Rebecca and demands the passcode for her cell phone. However, she stubbornly refuses to reveal it. Determined to gain access, he attempts to scan her face for the ID, but the dominant lady intentionally makes faces to prevent the phone from detecting it. Sick of her mind games, the wealthy heir pleads, asking for what the performer wants. Surprisingly, Rebecca reveals that she quit her job and ended her engagement because she felt disloyal to Hal. She explains that being with him has brought her a sense of fulfillment and self-discovery that she couldn't ignore. She also admits to secretly recording their sessions for her satisfaction. Thinking they are a perfect match, she explains that she despises herself in other aspects of her life but feels empowered and in control when she is with him. When Rebecca assumes Hal feels the same way about their dynamic, he only corrects her, explaining he feels shame. However, she counters by asserting that she has unlocked his authentic abnormal self, not the person his father wants him to be. As the woman insists they are a good pair, he grows out of his wit's end. He then demands a break, using sanctuary repetitively as a safe word. Despite this, Rebecca reiterates that she ended her job and engagement, implying that what they have is real. Consequently, Hal emerges from the bedroom, brandishing a sharp tool and using it as a threat to compel the persistent woman to declare that her claims of quitting her job and ending her engagement are all false. He warns that he will end both of their lives if she refuses. As Hal's pointed tool touches her face, she proposes an alternative approach, suggesting they engage in a game. In this game, she will assume the role of Philip, Hal's deceased father. Playing as the successor's father, the performer instructs Hal to greet him and release Rebecca from her restraints. However, the inheritor declines to participate in the role play and instead asserts his authority. He demands that she retract her prior statements and delete the video. Enraged, the strong woman breaks free from her restraints and approaches the wealthy successor, causing him to cower in fear. Disregarding him, she moves past him and switches off the lights in the room. As Rebecca continues to embody Philip, she emphasizes life experiences and accomplishments, highlighting family and business success. She then corners Hal in the bathroom, demanding that he repeat the phrase, I am nothing like you and I never will be. In defiance, the inheritor asserts, I am nothing like you and I don't have to be. Finally freed from the burden of his father's expectations, the heir leans towards Rebecca, and the two of them find solace in 
each other's arms, embracing each other tightly. The following day, Rebecca wakes up alone on the bathroom floor. After collecting her belongings, including her phone, she spots Hal in the living room, where he's cleaning up. The dominant lady then assures him that the video has been deleted. Before the woman departs, the rich man returns the luxurious watch to her, which she takes without hesitation. While Rebecca waits for the elevator in the hallway, Hal suddenly joins, informing her that he is meeting with his mother who will introduce him as CEO at her dinner speech. While descending the building, Hal ponders what will happen if he declines the executive position. She explains that if he doesn't take the job, someone else will reap the rewards of his father's efforts. Sensing his concern, she suggests using his inheritance to buy back the company and remove the board through a management buyout. When Hal asks Rebecca if she would get rid of the board if she were in the position, the dominant woman nods. Recognizing her competence and knowledge in the role, the heir suggests she get the high-level executive job. Noticing her hesitation, Hal reminds the strong-willed woman of the passion and fulfillment she experiences when she's playing the game or dominating people. He highlights that taking on the position would give her that sense of empowerment daily. Once the dominant woman becomes CEO, the submissive man shares that he will provide her emotional, mental, and physical support. Given his compliant personality, he emphasizes that he is fit to be her house husband. Once the elevator opens, a skeptic Rebecca questions what Hal will tell his mother to make his plan work. He then confidently states that he will tell his mom they are deeply in love and that she will take charge. Just before the elevator doors close again, the couple seals their agreement with a passionate kiss. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.